Hi folks, welcome to your cheese and wine tasting kit from Smash Grapes. We're not going to tell you which cheese goes with which wine because the reality is all cheese makes wine taste great. That combination of fat and salt really bring out all the flavours. Coming up, we've got our six drink along videos that give you a little bit more information on all the wines in the kit. Enjoy. This is Centelio Eren Moscatel from La Mancha in Spain. Yes, here we have a blend of Spain's most widely planted white grape, Eren, with a hint of Muscatel, the Spanish name for the French grape Muscat, which pops up in sweet wines all over Europe. This is no sweet wine though, Eren blends are the staple of what the Spanish like to call, and a style we love, table wines. Now, I'm a big fan of table wines because I think they're the very symbol of what wine should be about. No fuss, no frills, just really tasty, really easy drinking. They don't need to be the center of attention, more like the accompaniment to whatever's going on, a great family meal, a wedding, whatever that occasion is. That's right, and the Spanish, particularly in La Mancha, are excellent at these types of wine because they have been doing it for so long. Every man and his dog is making their own wine in this part of Spain, and they make it for one reason only, quenching thirst. But there is a bit of science behind it. Erin is high acid grape variety. It maintains acidity even when fully ripened in the Spanish sun. Acidity is the mouth-watering, thirst-quenching element of wine. Muscatel adds a little sugar. Not too much though, this is not a sweet wine. But a touch of sugar in wine is what makes it moorish. And that's exactly what we have here. First quenching, but moorish. You could sink a whole bottle accidentally very easily. Yeah, I mean, for me as well, what makes this a great table wine is it just tastes so fresh, like they've just squeezed it off the vine and into a glass. You know, am I imagining that? No, not at all. That is actually the result of what winemakers call only free run juice. Basically the juice that comes straight from the grape naturally as they are pressed under their own weight. No hardcore mechanical pressing here to squeeze out every drop. That tends to result in bitter astringent flavours from the skin and stalks seeping through to the wine and you just don't have that here. Okay, okay. I mean, it's a staple in my house and I'm guessing it's going to go with most things. Yeah? Absolutely. Start any meal with it. Fish, white meat, cheese, salads, really great with tapas, a cracking all-rounder white. Perfection. Cheers. Cheers. This is the Montsable Chardonnay from the Pays d'Oc in France. Yes, Chardonnay, a grape that many will write off immediately, but arguably France's most important white grape. Not only that, but the world's most widely planted white grape. Now, here at Smash Grape Sam, we are no strangers to the words anything but Chardonnay. You know, what's that all about? And why are we stocking them if that's the case? Yes, unfortunately, Chardonnay has suffered a bit of a bad rep over the last couple of decades. Thanks to some pretty shoddy winemaking in the 80s, covered up by doses of oak that would left you feeling like you had a mouthful of floor sweepers from Wix. Chardonnay is, however, an incredibly diverse grape. It can cope with any weather and is different depending on that weather, which is why it's grown all over the world. It also pops up in places that perhaps you didn't expect. Champagne. Chardonnay. Chablis. Chardonnay. Uh, the Macon villages. Chardonnay. Domaine de la Vougeray Chevalier Montrachet Grand Cru. Chardonnay. Yes, Chardonnay makes up some of the most prestigious French wines, particularly, as Dan so beautifully pronounced, one of the many white burgundies. White burgundy can be summed up as high acid, crisp and refreshing, with bags of fruit and just a hint of subtle oak to add richness to the wine. These guys are pros, but they're also up their own asses. Travel not far down the road to the Pays Dock and you can find fantastic examples of subtly oak Chardonnay, just like this one. Yeah, this wine definitely feels like Bridgerton meets Moulin Rouge. Classy, but sexy. Uh, there's a lot I like about it. Uh, I'm guessing it's fit for a bit of a banquet as well. Absolutely. This was one of our top picks for Christmas dinner last year and will go down brilliantly with any roasted bird. Lots of flavours in one wine, so it can suit a meal with lots on the table. I mean, I will have it on my table. Cheers. Cheers. This is Mabis Biscardo Oropasso from Veneto in Italy. That's right, the Biscardo family, one of the first families in Veneto to start making wine over 150 years ago. Now leaders in two types of wine that the region is famous for, Amarone and Suave. They make some of the world's best and fairly pricey it is too. However, keen to stay close to their roots, 
They have a trio of wines, red, white and rosé, that they use all of their wealth of experience to create a tasty yet accessible wine. This is their white and we love it. Oh, I mean, okay, so I know this one. Uh, and if we're talking Suave, which is a small region, then the grape is Garganega, right? Correct, but with a bit of a twist, this wine is 60% Garganega, the wine that goes into all Suave, but also 40% Chardonnay. Unusual for this part of the world, but in my opinion, a stroke of genius by the brothers Maurizio and Martino, as it adds a richness to the wine which really punches through. Yeah, I mean, these guys are famous for what people call dangerous drinkability. And um, we've got a 13% white wine here, lots of fruity flavor. Why then is it going down like lemonade? It is so easy drinking. Yes, this is really classy winemaking. The Garganega has all the refreshment factor you would expect from a Northern Italian white wine, just like Pinot Grigio. The Chardonnay, however, is really, really ripe. They actually use a technique called rapasso or appassimento, most commonly used for Amarone, where they dry the grapes out first to concentrate the sugars and flavor. It reduces the grapes water content by up to 40% before they then start winemaking. It's less common in whites, but that extra sugar balanced with the Garganega's acidity makes this ridiculously Moorish. So, you know, say more sugar, but it's not sweet. No, we're only talking about fractions of grams per litre of wine. It's still dry. With all that acidity being a cool climate wine, it's still got all that lip smacking freshness you want, but that little touch of sugar is what keeps you coming back for more. And what am I going to drink more of this one with? All sorts, really. It's an Italian grape. Pasta, risotto, fish. It's also great with mature cheese if you're more of a white wine fan but love a cheese board. I mean, I'll take the lot. Cheers. Cheers. This is Mont Rocher Malbec from the Pays Doc in France. That's right, Malbec, the nation's favorite red wine at the moment, and you'd be forgiven for thinking it was out of place anywhere other than Argentina. But France is actually the home of this popular grape variety. It's from Bordeaux originally, blended with Merlot, Cabernet Sauvignon, and Cabernet Franc to make those famous clarets. It's fallen out of favor in Bordeaux nowadays, but still pops up in the more southern region called Cofours. Okay, so if I'm a fan of Argentinian Malbec, is Cahors worth looking out for? Cahors Malbec is actually pretty different. It's not that far from Bordeaux, which is a cooler region than you think for being so south. Thanks to weather brought in from the Atlantic Ocean, this makes the Malbec less fruity and more astringent as it needs the heat to mellow out. For an experience of Malbec you're perhaps more used to, we've picked this wine grown all the way down right on the border of France and Spain, not far from the Met. Okay, so it's the heat down uh, in those southern parts of France that create the flavours of Malbec that we love. That's right, Malbec becomes dark and juicy in the summer sun, but what's most important is the thick skin that it has to protect itself from the heat. Instead of creating bitter tannins, these actually soften in the heat, making Malbec big and powerful, but also super velvety and smooth. That's what makes Malbec so great. I mean, the Argentinian Malbec often do have a bit of oak in them, right? Sometimes French and American oak, uh, and for really long periods of time, but that's not what we've got here. No, no oak on this wine. Argentinian Malbec has developed thicker and thicker skins in South American climate, which means there is a hint of bitterness that can be smoothed out with some oak aging. They're also powerful enough to take on that big vanilla bomb you get from adding American oak. We can think of this French version as a little more subtle. A midweek Malbec that gives you all of the flavor, but you don't need to have it with a 16 ounce T-bone like some of those big RG numbers. Uh, you know, so what am I enjoying this with then? A great barbecue wine for sure. Also goes really well with strong cheeses. Oh, sold. Cheers. Cheers. This is Famia Pacheco Monastrell from Jamila in Spain. Yes, if you're looking for the big guns, Jamila is the place to go in Spain. Their signature grape, Monastrell, aka Mouverger in France, is like their Australian Shiraz. This wine has power, has guts, and is one of my absolute favorite wines to drink in the world. Oof, drop in the favorite bomb. Uh, no, I know you love a Monastrell, but what is it that makes it a bit different to a big Aussie Shiraz? So if we were to describe the fruit flavors of big red wines, Shiraz is mostly red fruit, dark and stewed at times, but still mostly red fruits. 
Cabernet Sauvignon, another big red wine, is black fruits, blackberry and bramble type things. Monastrell is almost purple in flavour. It's blackcurrant, blueberry and for me a signature flavour, Parma Violets, which is why I guess I think of it as purple. It can be a face ripper just like Aussie Shiraz, but it's a face ripper in a purple velvet soup and I just love it. Now this is from another favourite winemaker of ours, uh, Elena Pacheco. Uh, she actually prides herself, doesn't she, on creating what she calls elegant tasting wines from this beast of a grape. That's right, perhaps unlike the Australians who embrace the beast of Shiraz, Elena and her family use a wealth of experience in grape growing to slow ripen Monastrell, mitigating some of those big bitter tannins and the astringency you get from full bodied reds. In fact, this wine is so velvety you'd be forgiven for thinking it had time in oak, but there's zero oak here. Jamila is also the home of my favourite type of festival, where they just play loud music all week and chuck red wine at each other out of plastic bottles, shoot each other with wine-filled water pistols. What is not to love? Make sure you pack plenty of Daz. Oh, absolutely. Uh, what are we pairing this excellent vino with? For me, it doesn't need the obvious big whack of protein. A rich paella with fish, chicken and chorizo, loads of spice, or a meaty bit of fish with a rich sauce. Mint fish? I did not think you would go there. Cheers. Cheers. This is Electric Bee Primitivo from Puglia in Italy. Yes, Primitivo, the signature grape of this southern Italian region, but perhaps more famously known as Zinfandel. This grape actually started its life in Croatia with a name that I'm not even going to try to pronounce. It very much made its home in Puglia. However, the Californians have made it their own under their own name. Okay, but hang on. When I think of California Zinfandel, uh, I think of that questionably cheap neon pink sweet rosé, uh, more than often consumed out of a box as pre-drinks by students. Surely this is not the same thing. Well, actually, what we call white Zinfandel is made from the same grape. However, red Zinfandel wines make up some of California's best and most prestigious vino. Very good if you love big jammy reds. We see a little red Zinfandel in the UK, but not a huge amount, and the good ones tend to be expensive, as good American wine does cost a fair bit. So can we expect the same from this Primitivo? Absolutely, Puglia is one of Italia's hottest regions. It's desert-like, not dissimilar to California. As a result, those dark fruit flavors become rich and jammy in the sun. Puglia is also a fantastic region for full-bodied Italian reds on a budget. It's a region with some of the fewest DOCs or accredited regions. Winemaking is considered rustic, but don't let that put you off. When would you ever turn down rustic Italian cooking with generations of experience? The same applies for the winemaking. Okay, I mean, also, half of Italy's olive oil is produced in Puglia, so there's a little fact for you to take home with you. What would I do without your contribution to these tastings? Well, you know, look, you're welcome. Uh, it's big, it's fruity, it's surprisingly easy going for this part of the world. Not the beast I was probably expecting, actually. Yeah, for sure, it's been very carefully managed by the winemaker. Lots of coastline for cooling sea breezes here, stretching out that ripening process to mean that it doesn't reach peak jam before those thick skins and bitter tannins have been well mellowed out. Okay, okay. I mean, you know, I'm feeling pretty mellow after a few glugs of this. You know, what can I pair that with? Rich red sauces, and I don't mean Heinz, anything with tons of tomatoes in. Oh, delightful. Cheers. Cheers. Thanks for watching our drink along videos. We hope you enjoyed the wine. Don't forget to come back and spend your £10 voucher on your favourite.